Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur Bootcamp. And this course is on branding the design process. We're going to take you through the five major and obviously many minor steps of creating a brand that can dominate a market, create emotion and trust, and build a foundation for a company to be much more successful over time. So let's get started. First, a good brand makes all marketing more effective. Hopefully you've already seen our regular branding course and module. This is a supplement to that to take you through the process. And I also recommend you look at the Apple case study maybe before you actually do this process. You don't need to have watched it to watch this module or course, but it will give you many ideas deep into the case study of the 44 year history of Apple computer in how it created one of the world's most valuable brands. So the first step, is to define your core values. Now this might sound strange, but it is the why of why your company exists. It is your core focus of what you want to be the best at in the world. And it will also create a filter built into the brand for the kinds of people you want to hire, the people you want to work with as vendors, and many other things. So although it may sound a little philosophical, it's very foundational to beginning the process of defining your brand. And remember, a brand is a personification of a company. And so every person has values. And that's one of the things we're trying to leverage in human psychology, which is the result of millions of years of evolution. Number two, you select your core messages. Now, depending on the complexity of your product, this could be from one or two messages to maybe hundreds of messages that you would keep in a list, which might be driven by keyword searching and your differentiation through competitive landscape maps that carves out the niche where you want to target a specific market and be the best at that thing. So you're going to want to test this. All marketing requires constant A-B testing because the world is changing and evolving. And so you always want a baseline of what's working best. And to sample or do what's called frugal experimentation is what I call it, around other messaging and things. Number three, you create your brand personality. And I think you know, if you've got through the branding course, that this humanization or personification process becomes the face of your company that ties into the inherent brain programming to remember people and faces and go toward pleasure and go away from danger, as well as many other shades of emotion. Fourth, your brand icons and examples. What are the visual triggers, the colors and, and the shapes that will be consistent with the personality that you want to put forward, because these act as a trigger and an index into people's mind to bring back the feelings about your company that you will build over time. Fifth, create a brand roadmap, and we'll take you through many examples, just like we will with icons, so that you can see ideas and put that into your own process. And that's it. Usually I do this process in about a half a day. It might go as long as a day. If you have a portfolio of products and a more complex or abstract business, the more abstract the business is, the harder it is because finding iconic visuals and other things are much harder for that kind of brand. For example, with the CEO Bootcamp, almost everything is abstract and visual. And so we use chess pieces as, as one example to uh, represent strategy. Things like strategy are kind of hard to re represent because they're so abstract. Now, just for convenience and refreshing your memory, I'm going to repeat the definition of a brand here. And of course, 
As I told you before, the definition out there from unsophisticated people and even Wikipedia is pretty wrong. It's basically ignoring and missing the most important things about a brand and making it an afterthought here in personality when the fact is that most of a brand is about that personality and how it can tie in to the human nervous system and senses to trigger the feelings of safety, good emotions as opposed to bad emotions, and more. So these are just the physical elements of the brand that are defining. And a car is not the sum of its parts. A car is transportation. And of course, car companies were one of the first to begin to segment populations and move from the Model T to hundreds or even thousands of models over time that were tied into people's demographics and psychographics to focus marketing and sales and improve the close ratios and the ROI from marketing and sales investments. And the most important point is this last one, as I said, barely an afterthought. So a brand is always to be thought of as the personification of a company. And more importantly, where does it exist? Remember, the brand exists in the minds of the consumer and the prospect and is built over time. Hence, it's very difficult to change without allowing time for that. And the goodwill or the value of that brand, which can be billions, is not in your control except over a long period of time by steering that brand in new ways. So the better definition of a brand that we've come up with is the collective emotional feelings and reputation of a company triggered by certain graphical and text elements like logos, taglines, positioning statements, even keywords and other things, it will vary based on your company and what is going to most enhance your unique selling proposition using visual selling propositions and also emotional selling propositions. And remember that CEOs and marketing heads are really the only people that can steer the brand because it needs to be thought about and used in every department in the company. So designing all of these elements to be consistent with the personality and the brand you want to create over time and project is very important. Not building your brand and designing your brand first is like showing up on day one to build a house without having a plan for your foundation. Keep uh, messaging consistent over time. We've talked about that with the examples of Roy Rogers and Morton Salt and how they underestimated the value of that brand out there after decades of repeated advertising uh, to the consumers. And lastly, ensure that the brand can deliver on its brand promises. It's important that these brand promises be true and executable doesn't mean everyone always gets perfect results all the time, but certainly more than half and ideally 80% of more of your customers should really appreciate and get that value that you're providing for that brand to have long-term long sustainability and hopefully competitive advantage as well. So remember, here are the components of a brand company name, logo, tagline, values, mission, purpose. These are all things that you need to think about. And it's emotional. It's about your reputation, as Jeff Bezos said in his feeling and definition of a brand. And it's about a feeling in the prospect and customer's mind that is built up over time that you are the go-to expert in that area of your marketplace, and that might just be for a particular target customer segment, and also a feeling of safety. Now, what makes you totally unique? The unique selling proposition, the right brand and USP, 
can mean much reduced advertising costs, better memorability, and certainly better profits. The USP has to be emphasized in every engagement with the customer in all messaging. And if you're using the standard marketing flow of ADA, attention, interest, desire, and action in your creative execution, whether it's a website page, a brochure, a video, or anything else, you want to follow that and make sure you're always emphasizing the USP and ideally using visual selling proposition based on the picture is worth a thousand words thing and the mind is designed to absorb images very rapidly as well as the emotional selling proposition and you probably remember fear uncertainty and doubt or fud that tends to be a motivator that can be twice as effective as positive only messages and so obviously you have to figure that out based on your particular product offering usp and target market so why will someone use you instead of the competition how many ways can you differentiate you know typically you can't have more than two or three things that you're communicating in a campaign or it gets diluted and the consumer will be confused but there certainly should be a clear priority order in how you present and deliver these things and prioritize your messaging in every campaign. Now, can you use that ID or emotional brand feeling to get at your ideal target? This is a simple but very important question. Does the USP resonate with your target market? as a big problem that they want to solve, they're willing to spend money on it now, and you can position yourself or deliver on being better than anyone else that solves that same problem. So this is very critical, especially during early market entry of a startup where you don't have a lot of money, you must focus on narrow niches to be the big fish in the small pond and not dilute your marketing. Because in marketing, people need to be seeing your message and your brand 8 to 11 times before they're going to remember it and take action. So you always want to hit the same people 10 times as opposed to 10 different people once. And that's why focus and niche is so important. So the right brand and messaging in USP will make all the difference in the world. And in fact, just the name of your company can make a huge difference if that's more memorable and the visual cues help reinforce the feeling of the company as well as the USP.